Hey guys, I got to see an advanced screening of the new Emma Seligman movie, Bottoms. Emma Seligman, not a household name per se, but she did direct an amazing movie, in my opinion, a couple of years back called Shiva Baby. This movie got a lot of buzz, played at the Toronto International Film Festival, kind of went under people's radar because it came out in the middle of the pandemic and people were a little preoccupied by uh, the pandemic. But Shiva Baby is one of the best movies that came out that year. It was dark, it was anxiety feeling, it was short, it was sweet, it was deep. It had a lot to say about modern feminism, but without being too preachy or too hammy. It was just a really solid, well-made, stressful, dark comedy. So when this movie was about to come out, I was really excited for it. Same director. Same actress as in Shiva Baby, Rachel Senot, who's getting a lot of attention lately because she's popping up in random movies and always delivering a great performance. She was in Bodies, 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 which, though I didn't really like the movie, I thought it was a bit too derivative of something I've seen already. I thought she was the best part of the movie. Anyway, I watched the trailer for Bottoms, and it really felt weird to me. I was like, this feels a lot more broad doesn't really have the same tone as Shiva Baby. But that could be a good thing, it can be a bad thing as well. It's a good thing because sometimes sophomore movies tend to just retread similar waters. The director that comes to mind when I think of that is someone like a Neil Blomkamp, where he made District 9, and his second movie was Elysium, and it was just a bit too much of what we saw with District 9. It just wasn't as fresh. So this could be a good approach, just try a new kind of tone, try a new kind of movie. I went to a pre-screening, like I said before, and the audience I was with was a very gay, queer audience. A lot of people were cheering the movie. And I watched the movie, and my beliefs from the trailer were confirmed. This is indeed a very tonally different movie from Shiva Baby. Very broad and uh, near parody, I would say. If there's movies like Booksmart and Superbad that kind of are a heightened reality of high school, this isn't that. This is a step beyond that. This is more of something like a uh, modern version of Revenge of the Nerds or a Meatballs or an Animal House where it's more of a parody of American high school culture, which is fun because the movie has this aesthetic that's kind of riffing off of those movies that I just mentioned. You even look at the posters, it kind of has that Animal House aesthetic. The screwball kind of over-the-top comedy really feels like Animal House. If there's one movie I'm going to compare this to a lot is Animal House, because just like Animal House was satirizing university culture, this movie is satirizing 2023 high school culture. So the story of this movie is you have two lesbian slash queer characters, they are in high school and they're about to graduate and they want to lose their virginities as most high schoolers in, the, in these movies want to. So they create a fight club, which they call a self-defense group, but their true intentions is to have sex with cheerleaders. Here's the problem though, I didn't laugh. You can reference what you want, but you gotta make me laugh at the end of the day. I laughed twice throughout the movie. I'm not gonna spoil what those laughs were, but I'll kind of explain why I didn't laugh that much. A lot of the dialogue felt very improv -y, which is the kind of humor that I tend not to laugh at in movies. Very few comedians make me laugh just on improv alone. Danny McBride is one that comes to mind where every time he does improv, I laugh, but they're very few and far between. And I don't think the cast had very good improv chops in this movie. And I think they just gave them a bit too much improv to do. Kind of has that Ghostbusters 2016 problem where the director just said, kept rolling the camera and said, keep going, keep going, keep going. And because of that, you just don't know where the end of the joke is. That and a lot of reliance on random dialogue hoping to get a laugh just because a character says something very random or something that you wouldn't expect, or just saying something pertaining to body parts, which I don't know why people think this, but just because male comedies have a lot of penis jokes, uh, which weren't funny, it doesn't make it funny when a female 
comedian says a vagina joke. It's kind of the same thing. Throughout the movie, I had a tough time grasping who these characters were. Rachel Senot and the other actress, who I'm forgetting her name, but she's basically a more newcomer. I haven't seen her in much stuff. Those two characters, they kind of reminded me of uh, a classic duo like Superbad. You had Michael Sarah and Jonah Hill, or in Booksmart, which came out a few years ago, you had Benny Fieldstein, and I forget the name of the other actress, where you have basically the straight man and the more wild character, and that's no exception here, so I understood their characters. When it came to the ensemble cast is where I had a bit more of a problem, where I just didn't understand who these characters were. I'll give one example, it's not really a spoiler, but at some point, uh, a black character tells another black character, I know you're a black Republican, but I will still trust you. She says something along the lines of that, and there's no indicator as to why this character would be a black Republican. It would be a funny joke had we kind of known the personality of this person a bit more and be like, okay, yeah, she does come across as a black Republican, I get it. But it, that doesn't happen. And a lot of it, it just feels like random stuff being thrown at you. And it just didn't make me laugh. The other thing too is, just like I said, this is Animal House. But it still tries to go for those emotional beats. But it ends up being very cliched. You have the basic liar reveal plot. Like I said, these are about characters who are starting this fight club. Uh, talking about certain intentions, but actually having different intentions. And you have the classic overdone two best friends break up and make up in the third act. Again, you have these emotional beats, but you're not really parodying them despite being in a parody movie. It just was a little too confusing to me. A movie I think does that well is a movie from a few years ago called Bad Trip with Eric Andre, where it's that classic road trip movie that you've seen a thousand times before, but they find a way to make fun of those very cliched plot points that show up in a road trip movie. I'm in the process of editing the video, but another movie came to mind, and I can't believe I forgot to mention it in the video, but Wet Hot American Summer. That's a perfect parody of high school teenage culture. I feel like this movie was like trapped between wanting to be sentimental like a book smart and being that over the top comedy like Wet Hot American Summer. As for the performances, I felt they were a bit too over the top. I felt like these characters are kind of having a shouting competition, trying to catch the attention of the viewer. They all wanted to be the funny character. And because of that, it just kind of gave me a headache after a while. So yeah, that's my thoughts on Bottoms. I think, listen, I went to the theater and sometimes these early screenings, you get a bunch of fanboys. A lot of people win it in the newspaper or win it on online competitions. My theater was laughing really hard. I was the only one who wasn't laughing, unfortunately. I thought this movie was a bit too inconsistent. It didn't feel as clever as Shiva Baby, and as for broad comedies, it doesn't feel as funny as some of your other high school movies that you have, be like Animal House, which this is a clear riff on, Superbad, uh, Mean Girls, Booksmart, which only came out a few years ago. This didn't feel as clever as those movies, uh, it, and it doesn't really, it didn't really make me laugh at the end of the day, so that's the problem I had with it. I think this is going to be a very popular movie in, in gay communities and stuff like that. Um, good. I think that's where the movie is going to find its niche. But as far as objective criticism goes, that I can't help but say that's how I felt. Uh, guys, are you going to watch this movie? Comment below, let me know, and I'll see you guys around. Take care.